Now, the best thing we have going for us is being who we are. Why? Because no one thinks we have the balls to pull this off. Well, all right, Mr. McQueen, I see you. I see you assembling this super duper all star cast. But let's see if it all paid off. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, guys? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Widows. I really do appreciate it. Now, this movie, Widows, right here, this is based off the 1983 British TV series. Um, I have not seen that. I wasn't even born at the time, but that's what this film is based off of. It's being directed by Stephen McQueen. If you are not familiar with him, he popped up on the scene for me and mostly everybody else uh, in 2013 when he wrote and directed and I believe produced as well uh, 12 Years a Slave. Uh, I was going to say with David or Yellow but that is not his name. I can't remember the Chit Chit Chitwell Edgy for it. If I butchered his name, excuse me. I thought that film was a great film, and so when I found out Steve McQueen was attached to Widows, um, I was even more excited. Now I cannot sit here and lie to you and say that at the beginning of 2018 that. Uh, Widows was in my top 10 most anticipated films of 2018. But when I did find out about the film later on in the year, when I found out the cast, when I found out the director, when I saw the trailer, I was just like, oh my gosh, this thing has Oscar contender all over. And I mean, this is probably going to win Best Picture, probably going to win Best Director, probably going to win Best Supporting Actor, Actress, and all that good stuff. But let's talk about it to see if it actually lives up to that hype. Now, what the film is about is we're going to take the main star in this film, uh, Viola Davis. She is one of the main characters in this film. She is married to a gentleman in this film by the name of Harry Rawlings, played by Liam Neeson. And Liam Neeson is part of this underground group, this sect, this organization of people that go around and steal things from either good people or bad people. If you want to know, you have to just see. And if it's justified or not, you're just going to have to see the film. And he crossed the wrong people and stole from the wrong people. So we have uh, Brian Tyree Henry in this. He plays Jamal Manning. He wants his money back. He wants his $2 million back. I'm not spoiling anything. This is all over the trailers. And so Viola Davis is scared like, damn, I don't know anything about my husband's past business. He's not here to save me. I'm a widow now. I need to team up with the other widows and see what we can do to get these money keys off of our back so that is the plot of the film now some of the positives in this film is the ending um i did not expect the ending at all um you know it was a breath of fresh air that will make more sense when you see the film and you know what i'm talking about so you can have some type of context so i didn't expect the ending the ending of the film was pretty much the best thing to me also, um, Stephen McQueen, he did some things with the camera that I've never seen in any film before. And I like that when I see something fresh, something new, something that has never been presented to me before with his uh, camera movements. Um, early on in the film, there was, I, I, I guess we can just call it a heist. But the way he had the camera in the back of the van was some type of first person shooter view. I was just really drawn in. I was at the edge of my seat. It, like I said, it was something that I've never seen before. You know, when, when the people involved in this scene, when they were moving back and forth, I was kind of moving back and forth too. It was just a great inventive way to incorporate what he was trying to capture and um, I liked it I liked it a lot now as far as everything else I mean we're going to talk about the performances the best performance in this movie does go to Viola Davis and I would say the second place goes to Brian Tyree Henry I really did like his performance if you don't know him uh, he popped up on the scene for me in the uh, FX show uh, Atlanta play uh, that is um, uh, show ran by Donald Glover now as far as the positives in this film that's pretty much all of them um, I'm not gonna waste you guys time and I'm not joking I'm, I'm, I'm being serious right now but this film widows is the most disappointing film of the entire year I was very disappointed with this film I was bored out of my mind for act one or act two if it wasn't for act three this film would possibly get like a d minus or an f and you're probably saying like oh my gosh brandon what the hell are you serious well yes i am serious and let's just go ahead and get into everything that really frustrated the hell out of me with this film first of all we have the widows in this film I just really didn't care about them. I, I couldn't sympathize with them. Or I couldn't empathize with them. I mean, I, I could sympathize with them somewhere, but I, I found myself 
asking this question. Should I feel sorry for these women here? Did, I mean, like, you know, did they deserve what they're getting? I mean, the film just did not give me enough reason to care for them. I mean, other than the plot telling you to, there was just nothing about the performance, nothing about their acting, just nothing to where I was just like, damn, I really hope that these women get out of this situation. You know, I, I want them to win. I want them to prevail. I want them to be on top. None of those emotions or thoughts crossed my mind while I was watching this. Um, also... In this film, it's kind of hard to determine who is the good guy and the bad guy. And when I say that, it's like, you know, when it comes to Brian Tyree Henry's character, I mean, I'm still on the fence whether I should root for him or not, and just a number of other characters, too. Now, uh, something else that really just bugged me is is that is this whole plot believable? Now, the reason, what I'm, what do I mean by that? What I mean is you have Le Liam Neeson's character that are like these expert um these expert heistmen or henchmen or whatever, you know, they go around doing all this dirt underground and behind the scenes and things like that. And for the most part, the film tells you that they're at the top of their game. I mean, you know, I'm talking like Ocean's Eleven style on top of their game, but they ended up dead because they... I don't know. They just didn't cross all the T's or dot all their I's, but they're professional. But then given the timeline that the widows had to pay back the money in this film, I'm just saying, okay, if these experts could not pull off the job, they have been doing this over and over and over for many years on top of years. What makes you think some widows that have never had any experience with underground life at all, life in the streets, how in the hell can they pull this off? Some of them can't even shoot a gun. Some of them have never even seen a gun in their entire life or even know how to buy one. But I'm supposed to buy, I'm supposed to buy that they're just supposed to just, you know, just jump into this underground lifestyle and just, you know, go and get $2 million and pay it back to these people and these people and then just walk out squeaky clean. I mean, that's just kind of a, like a hard pill for me to swallow and, um, I, I didn't swallow at all. Now, as far as the cast is concerned, let's just go down the list. Uh, Viola Davis, I stated that she had the best performance, but that did not come until the end of the film. Early on in the film, I mean, she was just mourning. Uh, and, and of course, she has a reason to. Her husband died. She's a widow. But um, the, the another film came out earlier this year. Why am I getting everybody's names wrong? I'm about to say Sebastian Stan. Uh, the guy, the astronaut guy, uh, Ryan Gosling, first man. There was a lot of complaints about that movie to where, you know, it just seemed like, you know, he wasn't acting at all. He was just kind of staring in the space, looking at nothing or whatever. And that's just kind of how I felt about Viola Davis's performance early on. But towards the end in the third act, that's when it came through for me. I was like, okay, damn, you know, you did a great job. Liam Neeson, he's not in the film that much, but he did an okay job. John Bernthal, he's in the trailers, but he's only in this film for just like half a second. Okay, now we have Michelle Rodriguez. I mean, she did an okay job. She didn't do bad. She didn't do good. Elizabeth Debicki, she did a little bit better. I was entertained by her, but it was just really nothing to knock my socks off. Now, Robert Duvall and Colin Farrell, they had some pretty good scenes, too. Uh, when I was doing a little bit of my research, Steve McQueen stated that he uh, had them improvising a lot. And you can definitely tell, especially with Robert Duvall's performance, because uh, I, I want to say kind of towards the end of the second act, I mean, it was I, I was entertained, but at the same time, I felt that he was just yelling. I mean, Robert Duvall is an Oscar. Um, uh, he's not a nominee. He's a winner. I can't remember how many times, but I know he's won at least once or twice or whatever. But at, at one point in time, I felt like he was just screaming. And it was a good performance, but I really just couldn't tie it. it, it there, had, there was no context to it. It didn't tie with anything in the story or any of the surrounding uh, environment or the situation. So I'm just kind of like, okay, bro, while I'm entertained, seeing you yell. And I understand that you're upset about something, but it really just doesn't make sense to me. Also, in this film, with, uh, you know, that was uh, it directed by Stephen Queen, he wrote it too. Did he write this thing too? Yeah, he wrote it and I believe he produced it as well on top of directing it. I also feel that he missed the mark when he was trying to adapt to black American culture. Um, there was just some things that, because he's a Brit, I, I don't, I, I've never been over there, so I can't talk about it too much, but there was just some things that identify with black American culture over here that he missed by a mile. Um, there was this one scene with the black church 
And nothing, I mean, I grew up in a black church and I know how, I know all the ins and outs, you know what I'm saying? People that look like me or people that don't look like me that have gone to black churches. Y'all know what the deal is here in America. And he just missed the mark with that. It just, I, I, it didn't feel like I was in church. I'm just like, I don't know. I just wasn't feeling that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you know what I'm talking about. I, I just wasn't feeling it. Um, there was, um, and, and I, I'm kind of, I feel like I'm just kind of skipping around right there, but also, uh, with the improvisation, um, w with some of the characters, it just, it just didn't do it for me, but sorry. Let me go back to the cast. I just thought about that real quick. But Colin Farrell, he did a good job. Um, I said second place as far as the acting is concerned. That does go to uh, Brian Tyree Henry, and there is one more cast member that I want to talk about, uh, Daniel Kaluuya. While well, I'm just scrolling down real quick, because I really want to make sure that I don't miss. Oh yeah, Cynthia Arrivo. I knew I was missing somebody. Um, she did a great job in uh, Bad Times at the Air Royale. She's also, the film is filming right now. Harry, uh, she's playing Harriet Tubman. Going to be, the film is going to be called uh, Harriet. Um, disappointed about that. I could talk about that later. She did an okay job in this film. She was barely in it as well. Um, now, the last, per the last cast person that I want to talk about, we talked about the whole cast, and I pretty much said that they did a decent job. And I talked about Viola Davis and Brian Tyree Henry. They pretty much stole the show as far as their performances are concerned. But let's get down to Brother Kaluuya, Mr. Get Out. Mr. Get Out, he got out of that house so fast and ran to Wakanda and turned himself into Wakabi. I mean, he was great and Get Out. He was fantastic in Black Panther as Wakabi. And please try to look up on YouTube right now the deleted scene. Um, of him talking to his wife Okoye. So he knocked it out in those two films. But this film right here, Widows, pretty much one of the worst performances I have seen in my entire, I don't want to exaggerate and say my entire life, but honestly, this is one of the worst performances I've seen in all of 2018. No lie, this is not a joke. I am effing serious. I don't understand what happened. Well, I, I think I do, and I'm going to tell you here in just a little bit, but Daniel Kaluuya's role was supposed to be trying to play some stereotypical, thugged out, triple OG type of figure. You know what I'm saying? An original gangster. Just somebody that you don't mess with. Somebody that you don't double cross. Somebody to where if you look at them wrong, they're going to put a bullet in your head or just beat the hell out of you. You know what I'm saying? He was supposed to be one of the antagonists. Uh, the, one of the antagonist in this film i was gonna say protagonist he's one of the antagonists in this film and it just wasn't convincing it was corny it was damn near laugh out loud funny like bro what are you doing you i am not convinced you look like a fool trying to play the threat i mean it was comical i mean like i was worried and when i saw the trailer one of the things that i was worried about i'm just like bro like I, okay i haven't seen the film you look a little silly in the trailer but let me see the film and let me get the context of all your mannerism and things like that maybe you're gonna hit this hole maybe you're gonna knock it out the park you know what i'm saying hit a home run but y'all know in the trailer where he all ended up in the dude's face going like this you know like all up in here trying to act all hard and stuff like that it looks silly in the trailer and it looked even dumber in the movie i'm just like what is going on i'm looking to my left looking at my right like do y'all see this shit this is trash this is garbage i don't know what happened to me. like please go see the movie just it, it just was whack i mean like Every time a movie or is introducing an antagonist, they always have that one scene or two, especially at the very beginning of the movie, to, they're, they're murdering someone or torturing someone. And I'm just like, okay, damn, like this guy right here, you don't want to mess with them. You know what I'm saying? It just sets the tone for the rest of the picture. From the moment Daniel Kaluuya popped on stage or, or up on screen, I'm just like, bro, sit your ass down. You know what I'm saying? I love you, my brother. I, you know what I'm saying? I... I I want to support you and all your acting chops now and on to the future. But this right here, bro, you did just a horrible job. And I don't blame you. I know you can act because you did a great job and get out and, and um, Black Panther and everything else. I, I also saw that uh, episode of Black Mirror or whatever. I've only seen two episodes of all the seasons they got. But it was one to where, you know, you know the one where he was in where... They lock you in a room and you got to pay the credits and the, the porn comes up and like makes you jack off and stuff like that. Makes you master. It, it was freaking weird or whatever. But he did a great job of that too. But this right here was trash. 
And I have to blame the director for this. I have to blame Steve McQueen because you have this whole cast. Just everybody in this whole cast can act. They freaking behind off, but it didn't come through in this film. And I just blame it on the director. I mean, in every other movie, if y'all can just give these great, fantastic performances, but then when y'all come together, when y'all assemble like the damn Avengers, and uh, y'all, some of y'all nearly crapped the bed, that can only be blamed on the director. Also, I just blame on the director. I mean, there were so many people in this movie that just didn't do anything. I mean, like he just. It, it, it's like, okay, man, if you give, if you have one toy or two toys, if you like toys, you know what I'm saying? You're going to play with them. You're going to figure out all the mechanics and stuff like that. If you had an Optimus Prime toy, you're going to be able to transform it and do all this and, and focus on it. You know what I'm saying? But he had too many toys to where he's like, oh, I don't know what to do with me. Like, I want to play with this one. but I got to play with this one over here and I got to play with this and da, 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 da. The plot of this film was like scattered. Like you had too many random events happening. So I'm like, okay, we were just here in this scene. Now why are we way over here? Like I, I don't understand. I don't really feel like it's coming together and it's distracting me. It's clocking me out and I'm just like losing interest on board and I kind of want to go home. Now I will give Steve McQueen credit. It all did come together in the end full circle. So I will give him that. That's why I said at the beginning of this review that um, the ending of the film saved it, and it was uh, it was great. But um, it was it was just too uh, spread apart. I mean, I was dreading the first two acts. I were, I was really ready to go home. I, I was like, I don't want to watch this movie no more. And I don't even let me see how long this thing is, real quick. Okay, where's okay? This movie is two hours and nine minutes. Okay. Yeah, and that, that seems about right in this crime uh, drama romance. Um, something else that I want to talk about real quick is, okay, random. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's what I was going to talk about. I knew I was leaving something out. Now, um, I recently had a uh, film. I, I recently did the review for uh, Instant Family with Mark Wahlberg. And I said in that review, go check it out. Please subscribe. Go check it out. I said in that review that I was surprised with all the all the race issues that they addressed. And I think it was integrated in that film very well. It was all cohesive. What Stephen McQueen tried to do in this film with race did not make sense. And I'm not talking about bed winching or anything like that. I don't I don't have a problem with that as long as uh, one of the, the, the darker skin party does not turn into a coon. Um... When it had to do with like race relations and trying to label his characters uh, with like what were they following the justice line and things like that, uh, he had a one white character use the word nigger, and I was like, okay, he's a racist. But then again, I just wasn't convinced because usually when that happens in any other film, I'm like, oh, okay, oh, oh, okay, you you know, it it, it, it moves you. I, I I can feel it. It feel like I got stabbed in my heart or something like that. And I'm I immediately know from that point on, okay, this is the bad guy. We want him to lose. I did not feel that in this movie. We had another character in this film that was extremely jealous of black guys. Like, have you ever asking a white a white man asking a white woman, have you ever slept with a black man before? Have you ever? I don't know where it came from. And yeah, I mean, we there are men like that in the world that do exist that will lose their ever minds if they find out that a white woman or any woman is dating a a, a black person or a brown person, and it, it'll just freak them the f out. So. Him and putting that to the film, yes, it's realistic to the real world, but it just did not fit in this film. It just felt random. I was like, okay, bro, you kind of fell there. And that's just another example of why I said Steve McQueen failed to me when he's trying to adapt things that have to do with a lot of black American culture. Um, and then again, guys, there was just really no motivation for the other characters, the other widows in this movie to join Viola Davis. I mean, it made sense for Viola Davis to want this plan to come through, but it did not make sense for everybody else. And guys, I would just, oh, one more thing I want to talk about is like, I don't mind sex being in a film. I don't, um, especially if it's necessary. For example, we all seen the movie Green Mile where Tom Hanks he had, I forgot what condition he had, but he couldn't have, he couldn't have sex with his wife. He couldn't smash his wife or whatever. I forgot what it, but anyway, uh, Mark, Mark Clark Duncan, you know, grabbed his piece, healed him and all that good stuff. He went home, smashed the crap out of his wife. You know what I'm saying? And they kind of showed some of it. That was necessary. Okay. I mean, there was a reason for it in the plot. I mean, he couldn't have sex with his wife. Sex is very important in a marriage. Probably one of the number one, top three most important, probably top two. 
too. You know, communication and personal space is very important as well. You know, that's what my mom and daddy told me and some other married people that are like, you get what I'm saying. But also the movie Monsters Ball with uh, Holly Berry, you know, when she smashed uh, Billy Bob Thornton, given her mental state in that position in the context of the film, I feel that was necessary. But in this film right here, you have some excessive French tongue kissing lip locking for no reason at all. It's like, why are they doing, okay, like, I, I mean, yeah, people, everybody kisses, everybody done use their tongue to kiss somebody in the world. I hope so, if you're an adult. Like, if, if not, I, I don't know what to tell you. I hope so. So, but... And, and, and it's a private matter, and I don't mind that being in the film, but if it's just in the film for no damn reason, why is it there? And that it is in this film at the very beginning, and it didn't come across passionate or love making. It just came across as gross, like some two teenagers trying to just act like adults at the Friday night football game behind the bleachers or something like that. I mean, the two key characters that was lip locking like this, just slobbing each other down. It, it, it would be different if the film told us, okay, they haven't seen each other in 15 years or they haven't had sex in a long time or, you know, they haven't withdrawals or something like that. It was just random lip locking and a random tongue licking and like, like, it looked like two venoms just going at it. Like, ah, ah, ah. I'm like, what the hell? Like, I didn't, and I'm not the only one that complained about it. Everybody was like, ooh, ooh. And these are adults that are ooing and ewing and stuff like that. It's not that they were being children or childish or whatever. So, guys, like I said, this film is just really, really disappointing to me. It all came together for a circle in the end. And the twist or thing that popped up in the middle of the end of the film, you, you're not going to guess it. And I, I, I will give it that. But I am very, very, very disappointed with this film. It let me down. And, um, damn, I think the worst thing was Daniel Kaluuya's performance. Um, uh, it was, it was just trash. Um, if you go on Rotten Tomatoes right now, I think this is like 92%. And I am not one of those people that agree with it. All films are subjective. If I had to rate Widows out of a one out of 10, it barely passes. It barely passes, but I'm going to give it a six out of 10. Yes, a six out of 10 and that is only because of the ending or the third act uh it did bring it back up but guys that is just my opinion have you seen widows or do you want to see it have i turned you on have i turned you off do you agree with me or do you disagree with me let me know down in the comment section below let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing if you like this video go ahead and give me the thumbs up and if you don't that's fine but you can still subscribe to my channel and guys i'm like right there at like 6,000. I think I get like 10 more at the time I'm recording this video. Will I reach 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year? Well, it is up to two people. It is up to me to work my ass off and do it. And it is also up to you. How can you help? First of all, just hit subscribe and then hit that share button. It will really help me out, guys. You can also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all that good stuff. It's right there at the bottom of your screen, and I made it very easy by providing a link to all that good stuff there in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Widows with an all-star super Avengers cast written and directed by Stephen McQueen. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion.